Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 24 of my linear algebra tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, I am going to talk a lot about the method of least squares, which is used for regression analysis, which is used heavily in the areas of data science as well as machine learning. And briefly, it just involves creating a function that approximates data. And I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so... Let's say we have some matrix and some vector that is equal to some result. Sometimes, we've previously talked about this in this tutorial series, but sometimes this has no solution. So you may ask yourself, well, how could we approximate it? Well, the least square solution provides the best approximate solution. So what I want to do here is I actually want to show you a situation in which this would work. So let's say we have a matrix, and then, at, then afterwards I'll actually show you a, a situation in which it will not work, and we'll show you how to create an approximation. So let's say we have this matrix right here, times x, and it is equal to 1 and negative 2. Well, this is going to be converted into 2, negative 4, 1, negative 2. And of course, this would be x1 and x2. And once again, equal to 1 and negative 2. We're going to be able to further then say x1, 2 and 4, plus x2, 1 and negative 2. And see if you can work out the example just by looking at this. Well, time's up because I think it's kind of clear here. It's kind of a trick. But basically, I think it's clear that x1 in this situation is going to be equal to 0. And x2 is going to be equal to 1. And the reason is because if we add 0 of this and 1 of this, well, look, they're exactly the same thing. However, very often there is no combination of A that is going to lead to a vector B. And the least square solution is basically going to create a projection of vector X on the column space of A. And as we said in the last video, that projection of a vector onto a subspace is going to be the closest possible vector that is in the subspace of A. So let me expand on this. Let's say we have a couple different equations. x is equal to 1 minus y over 2. y is equal to 3x plus 2. And y is equal to 2x. Well, we're going to be able to translate this into x plus 1 half y is equal to 1. Negative 3x plus y is equal to 2. And negative 2x plus y is equal to 0. And if we plot these out for our first equation here, that graph is going to look roughly like this. All right, in that general vicinity. Our second equation is going to look roughly like this. And then our third equation is going to look roughly like that. Okay? Got them in there as closely as I could possibly get in. All right, so now we can see that these three equations never meet at any single point. So what does that mean? That means there's no solution. Up here, we can see that with our first equation, we are going to meet our third equation at 1, half, and 1. And we can see that we touch this equation right here at 0 and 2. With our second equation, we can see that we touch a line, of course, at 0 and 2, as we just said. And also with the last equation at negative 2 and negative 4, and we can also see down here that we touch at 1 half and 1 and negative 2 and 4 and negative 4. Okay, so that's where these different equations touch on our coordinate plane, but not all three of them touch in any one point. And you can see in here, I think, 
quite easily that there's a point right here where there's two of them touching or there's two points and then there's one down here as well. So what does this mean? Well, this basically just means for a x equal to b, b is not in the column space of a. However, we can use what I referred to earlier as the least square solution to get an extremely close approximation to where all three lines almost touch each other. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave my equations on here and show you exactly how to work out all of these problems to find a approximation. So, this is going to be able to be translated, our equation we have here, into 1, negative 3, negative 2, 1 half, 1, and 1. And this is going to represent A. We're then going to have X inside here, and X and Y in this situation. So let's just make that X, Y. And it is going to be equal to 1, 2, and 0. So this is going to represent X, and this is going to represent B. Well, the least square solution actually has a formula, and that formula is A transform times A. X is going to be equal to A transform B. So we're going to use that to solve this. So to do so, I need to find A transform, which is going to be equal to 1, 1 half, negative 3, 1, negative 2, 1, like that. Then I'm going to have to go and find A times, or A transform times A, which is going to be equal to 1, 1 half, negative 3, 1, negative 2, and 1, times A, so that'll be 1, 1 half, negative 3, 1, negative 2, and 1. And if we work this out, this is going to give us a final value of 14, negative 9 over 2, negative 9 over 2, and 9 over 4. Now we go and get a transform times b, which will be equal to 1, 1, and a half, negative 3, 1, negative 2, 1, times 1, 2, 0, which will be equal to negative 5 and 5 over 2. And with this new information, we're going to be able to say 14, negative 9 over 2, negative 9 over 2, 9 over 4, x is going to be equal to negative 5, 5 over 2. And what we're going to be able to do now is augment these two. So let's just go and get rid of this. And grab this guy right here. Put this in right there. And draw a line down the middle. And let's go and convert this. So what I want to do is I'm going to convert it into reduced row echelon form to find our approximation. So how do we do that? Well, we say R2 plus 9 over 28 times R1 and put that result into R2. If I do so, this will end up being 14, negative 9 over 2, negative 5, and 0, 45 over 56, and 25 over 28. Now what? Well, I'm going to take R2 times 56 over 45 and put that result in R2. If I do that, I'm going to end up getting 14, negative 9 over 2, negative 5, 0, 1, 10 over 9. And we can see we're getting an answer right here. And then I'm going to take R1 plus 9 over 2, which is going to be times R2, and put that into R1, which gives us 14, 0, 0, 0, 1, 
10 over 9. And then to get our final result, I go 1 over 14 times R1, which is going to give us 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 10 over 9 as our final answer. And this means that our least square solution is going to end up being equal to 0 and approximately 1.111. And if we look here in our chart, if we go 0 and 11111, that's going to put our dot right about there, which I think you can say is really close to the center where all of those different lines could potentially meet. And there you go, that is the least square solution. Like I said, extremely important in the areas of data science as well as machine learning. If you continue learning these two specific subjects, you'll come across it constantly. And like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.